Bedankt in ieder geval om nog zo lang te blijven. Uh, thanks for uh, staying here. I guess this is the first time people in this room were not uh, talking all the time and leaving and or sleeping uh, since I last was here. So um, I'm here to tell you the story about Datatonic and uh, how we uh, won the Google Award. Uh, we won the Google Cloud Platform Services Partner of the Year Award. So it's a, it's a mouthful, but uh, it was uh, very exciting. So basically, uh, Datatonic, um, we're a team of data experts. So we help companies uh, drive, uh, get the most value out of their data. And we do that basically on two pillars. We have a consulting pillar and we have a platform which we use, which we develop ourselves as well. Um, for this talk or this, 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 uh, this evening session, we will not talk about our platform. This is mo mostly about the consulting part, um, but which we will handle today. So, um, yes. So basically, we have two offices um, in the UK and in Belgium, uh, in Rustelare in the far west. So I like to say we, uh, we're represented in the two biggest cities of, uh, of Europe. Uh, that's uh, the first time I make this joke. <laughs> but not really. <laughs> um, but, uh, but yeah, um, so in the UK and in Belgium. Um, yeah. So, um, I mean, the most important thing to know is basically we're all engineers. We all studied, studied here as well. Um, just by ways of hands, how many people uh, graduated here from University of Ghent. So that's quite a lot. And how many people are actually still studying here? So yeah, that's also quite a lot. I was going to say it feels good to be back, but uh, then I came to my senses. Um, anyway, so um, we are, our consulting uh, part is actually based on, on three kind of technology sets, technology stacks. And we work mainly with Google Cloud Platform, for which we are now a premier partner, uh, with Tipco Software and with Tableau. Um, so Tableau and Tipco, they are uh, data visualization software. So basically, um, like Power BI, you have, for example, Spotfire. Like uh, Spotfire, you have Tableau. Spotfire is mainly used in uh, the finance world because it has the R engine built in. And Tableau is very um, self-service uh, and is used by the business a lot. And it has a very good connection with, um, with Google Cloud Platform which we leverage. So for Google Cloud Platform, we focus on the data services. Um, so we had uh, a, a small overview by David uh, as well, but um, they also have, for example, like App Engine, which Angry Birds uses. It's basically kind of like a service, service where you can uh, deploy your Python code or whatever, your backend code, and um, it's basically going to scale up and down whatever you want. But we're not doing that, we're mainly focusing on the data services to help our customers. So um, the reason why we're here is um, in Las Vegas. Uh, these two won the Google Cloud Platform Award. Um, we were very amazed. It's a, it's a really cool thing to achieve, especially as a, as a very small team. We're six, by the way. Um, so it's, it's really exciting. The, the guys at Google, they give a big speech on why they chose us. But these two, they had a, a bit too much fun with the Googlers the day before. So they didn't remember everything they said. So I have to uh, uh, kind of uh, build it up again. But um, I'm not in this picture. Uh, and the reason I'm not in this picture is because uh, I became a father uh, at that moment. Um, so you can. Uh, yeah. So this is kind of like the personal card. Uh, I know. Um, but. Um, you can also see that Matthias is really used to holding awards, but not very much babies. Uh, <laughs> but that's, uh, that's the last joke, I swear. OK, um, moving on. Um, basically, what we do, uh, maybe perhaps why Google likes us so much, is we offer um, workshops. Um, and this is not the entire story, but what we do most of the time, um, you, have, you have big companies who, are, who ask to Google, what does your technology mean? What can it mean for us? And then they say, here's, here's these guys from Datatonic. They'll come on site for three to five days. And they'll show you what you can do. And that's basically exactly what we kind of offer. So three to five days with guys from our team. And we, we impress, basically. That's the thing. So uh, to continue, um, I have a lot of, I mean, a couple of case studies. 
uh, following, and Matthias will do a demo, which kind of illustrates this a bit more. Um, has anyone heard this one before, Vent Exclusif? We that's all right, because we've, we've milked this one quite often. But um, basically, uh, Vont Exclusive is an e-commerce website, and they uh, have uh, flash sales. So basically, they sell, for example, like shoes for four days, and you have four days' time to kind of fill in the order. And um, they are also a very heavy IT, IT company, so they develop everything themselves. Uh, but they had issues, because their entire supply chain generated um, 1.5 billion data points for their email alone um, in, a, in, a, in a small amount of time and the other events from the websites uh, on top of that. Uh, the other logistics processes um, are, not, are, not, are not displayed here. But um, we helped them in this kind of like three to five day workshop um, with designing an entirely new data architecture uh, with Google Cloud Platform and Tableau, uh, which allowed them to um, yeah, do the stuff that they wanted. So they wanted to do, for example, they wanted to build a recommendation engine, which we then also built, not in those three to five days, but in a project after that. But we kind of like set the foundation uh, for them to uh, continue. So, um, yeah. Um, yeah, this is a, a quote, um, but um, we're actually doing the same thing now as well for, for a company called Cool Blue. Um, they have an even stronger IT team. Um, it's, it's, um, they have ex-Apple guys there. So uh, they're also notoriously known for not working with, with external consultants. Um, so we're quite proud that they still uh, want to work with us, basically. Um, so that's even on a larger scale. Um, it's a much bigger company as well. So uh, another example. Um, is uh, something we did uh, in the finance industry, and it's basically a rogue trader detection. And uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a huge project, but a small part of it was um, we got data from Bloomberg chat, and we had to figure out whether the uh, communication between different traders from different banks influenced their uh, behavior, their trading behavior. Um, very interesting to see um, around 80% was what did you did what did you do last night uh, stuff like that so uh, but it was a, a, a cool a cool project um, moving on we um, do a lot of stuff as well for um, with sensor values uh, with time series basically um, and this is for government a government project where we got the data from the loops which are in the, um, in the roads and we combine that with telematics and with also with the incidents and uh, the, the traffic incidents data um, and doing that we were able to kind of indicate to calculate the likelihood where um, uh, potential dangerous situations will be in the future for example if they have roadworks and you see that the specific um, uh, accelerometer data is getting to kind of like a specific threshold, then you uh, kind of, is that an indication of maybe the, the speed limit is set, is set too, 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 too high or something for that specific uh, section. But that's also based on, on, on the huge data sets which comes in in real time and which you, has to, which you have to process. And that's the beauty about Google Cloud Platform is that you don't have to worry about infrastructure or write your own map reduce. It's uh, it scales automatically. Um, moving on. Smart meter data. Um, this is basically gas and um, water, um, also based on kind of like the usage, usage patterns from different user users. We are kind of um, building different pricing strategies on the fly. So basically, you have customers who are only at ho uh, home in the evening, and like not like normal people, but other other um, customers are, for example, like companies or even other kind of like mixes in between. So um, it's the same story, just gathering all, all, all of the data at the, ro at the lowest level and then just analyzing on, on the fly. So for um, IoT, also sensor data, uh, we also work very heavily on the preventive maintenance part. So um, very fast, a couple of projects. We have a lot more uh, which we can share. Um, if you want to know more, please contact me, or we can do a different session. Um, moving on, perhaps. And then now Matthias is going to do a demo. So 
for a retailer in the UK. Um, Matthias is going to show what we've done in, in, for example, like in a workshop. This is kind of like the result of, of the workshop. All right, okay, so actually I won't be using their data, just simulated data that's pretty similar uh, to like demo what we will do. We'll work with, uh, uh, with data from uh, different stores of this retailer. So this demo is actually in the whole of Europe. So let's say I have like a thousand stores and they actually in real time we want to like see which items have been bought which items have been bought together, how many tickets there are, and stuff like that. Um, so normally this is something they always do in batch, or if they even do it. So what we did with them was actually doing this analysis, but like on a minute level. So I just started some machines here. So this is like uh, starting the machines that will actually generate the data that like similar, like uh, simulate tickets. So each of these will simulate uh, a number of uh, tickets that's actually some, some uh, customers uh, that buy things in different stores here. So um, if I show you what that looks like. So these are represented by like the different 10 different machines that actually like say, okay, this uh, user bought one shoe and one something else and this place um, and this shoe is something in this category all data like that um, so this can increase can downscale um, so just sampled everything will be gathered in pubs up so this is like kafka but then a service as a service so also a google cloud platform service and this scales automatically to spotify scale um, then we actually handle the data data flow will just it's pretty simple here. We will just aggregate it on different levels. So like aggregate it on the level of per products, aggregate it on the level of uh, different stores or on different categories. And Dataflow will then actually put it in BigQuery. So it's easily to like query it on a huge scale. And then we'll just put Tableau at the end to actually get some visualizations of it. So this is how it looks like. Uh, what you'll see here, we don't actually think about machines, it's just the services. We'll have just some, some lines of code that we'll just push to Google Cloud Platform and then they will look at everything scales. So then you'll have something like this. Uh, all right. So now what I have this is just uh, the demo dashboard, just to show like what we can do with it. Um, this is like the end result. Um, boom, boom, boom. So what happens is that these machines, not sure if they actually started already. Um, these machines I just started, like just when I started the presentation, I said, okay, use 10 machines. They will set up the machines, get the code to like simulate the different tickets that they need to send. Uh, these machines will send it to PubSub. Then we have this data flow job, which is not doing a lot. So this is like just the flow of what we uh, programmed it to do. So it will just read it from PubSub. Um, then it will like make windows. So it actually every one minute it will aggregate everything together. And then it will just do the counting and here just do it to push it to BigQuery. So what's pretty nice about Dataflow is that one, it also auto scales, and secondly, it's easy to uh, like write code that runs in batch, but also runs in uh, streaming modes. Actually, you can use the same code that runs as well in batch as in streaming modes. So that has a, a lot of benefits, of course, because you can like uh, repeat history with like new rules or something like that. Um, so this is basically how it looks like. Not sure why there are just four elements per second here, but okay. So um, so all of that will get pushed in BigQuery, 
And then what we'll do is just have some, yeah, this dashboard will actually just query BigQuery um, to get the results we want. So, so we can like play this in real time to see what happens. Uh, so these are like just the simulation that have been shown. Um, and just on the different locations, the different amount of tickets that have been sold. Here you can see that as well. Um, so these are like different kind of queries you can do on it. And here you can see the actual number of items in there. So what I can also do for this demo normally is like uh, change the number of um, items that are pushed. So if I in here say, okay, use uh, push thousands elements uh, for this machine, I can assign this. Then it will actually increase the number of items that will be pushed. So that's like the reason I get this push here, because <coughs> before I just tried it to like see how high it goes. Um, so dun dun dun. we should see like these are all the 10 new machines that actually are pushing data in there. So I will just let it run a little bit, and after a minute or something like that, we will should see some peak in there, hopefully. So basically, you have a couple of machines that generate uh, kind of like data that simulates store data. One is going to be pushed using DataFlow, which is a, which is ETL on a huge scale distributed, and uh, then it's going to plug that into BigQuery, which is a um, um, analytical database. So basically, BigQuery doesn't care how much data is in there. If you fire a query, it's going to give you the results back in a couple of seconds. And it's going to figure out itself how many scales it needs to be distributed. Um, so that will work very, very nicely with BigQuery. But you have to wait for the control because everything is kind of like set up. And once it's rolling, it goes from its part. Yeah, so here you can see that's actually rising. It's not rising that fast. But I mean, that is the data from, like, if you have like thousands of uh, tickets per minute, uh, it's not that bad. Um, so this will actually always get pushed, and I could just get the latest data from every minute. So that's. All right, okay, so here we're going. So here you can see like the number of items at this top. So this is for just for the United Kingdom, there are 80, 863,340 for uh, just in this minute, and these are all the other countries. So we have just some yeah, items in there, just the number of tickets. Um, okay, so this basically takes us like half a day just to build this kind of pipeline to actually process, uh, to get the data and to actually process it in real time and to get everything like at this scale. So that's really what's, uh, what's helping a lot of companies because uh, it normally takes them a lot more time. So when we go in and they uh, will probably do this in a few days, um, they're always quite amazed that uh, we actually get the end results at the end of the workshop. So. So, and like the other kind of, uh, so the, the first one was just like more just counting things, but like on a huge scale and in real time. Uh, another thing we can do is actually, uh, also part of this like workshop was that they want to do some uh, market basket analysis. So given the number of tickets with number of items in there, they want to see which items are bought together. So that can help them to like do specific uh, pricing on Items not related, so make one cheap, make the other one a lot more costlier, or give them uh, the separation in the in the shop, like put them next to each other or somewhere around. Um, so here, for we like uh, worked on like uh, lots of tickets, uh, millions or I think close to a billion tickets we actually used. So and on that we did uh, frequent pattern mining using Spark, that's run on Dataproc. So the actual uh, results here is then. Like on this level, we did it just for like different categories. Just see, okay, given um, if they bought something in this segment, uh, what are the, the uh, like the odds 
that they actually bought something in the other segments. So you can see like, uh, so, so like the dark gray ones are the things that are actually very high correlated. The orange ones are like the things that are not correlated at all. Um, okay. So for, for doing this, um, we also start just from the tickets. So yeah, we have different tickets with different items in there. Um, this one, uh, so this was historic data, that actual data they actually ha had. So we then had something on cloud storage, like the, the one billion items here. And then we uh, just started Dataproc. And to build like this small kind of a demo uh, in Spark, you have like uh, parallel FP growth. So it's like a very uh, powerful or very performant algorithm to actually do this kind of analysis. Um, so again, we just ran it in Dataproc. Um, and if it needs more machines, we just give it more machines. So you don't have to uh, do that much of work. Um, and then we push it again back in BigQuery, like on different levels. But the nice thing here is that we can actually do it a lot of times. So you, you can say, OK, do this for all the items. But you can say also, like, do this for all the, all, all the tickets from this kind of segment of users. like for this age range or for uh, items that are sold, sold in a specific store. So the nice thing is that we can actually do this on a lot of different kind of uh, segments. So normally what they did before was they just write some SQL queries, <laughs> SQL queries that actually took sometimes like uh, hours or days and didn't actually run. Uh, so they had to do this like like once a year, they want to do something. I had to really think carefully like what they wanted to do because they couldn't actually do it. Um, here we just took all of their data and we just wrote some code that actually did it on lots of different kind of segments. Um, so that's quite powerful because it really makes their life a lot easier and it enables them to do like a lot of things more. Um, so here again, it's like always like kind of this kind of <coughs> flow we use. Um, if it's a BigQuery, then we just look at it with Tableau. So this helps to like see if something is wrong, like or some IDs linked to incorrect name or something like that. Um, and it helps them to actually uh, dissect the results or the insight to actually do something with it. So this is kind of the end result of that uh, part. So here we have like, um, okay, this is for uh, different categories that we did this analysis. Um, and then we plot like on the different, uh, on two levels. So first we have the lift. So lift means like what actually is the increased, uh, so given two items, what's the uh, ass uh, assumed like uh, probability that they will be bought together and like how much more did they actually or bought together. So if you take the, yeah. if you take those two, then you get the lift. And support is just like how many times they actually occurred. So here you can just like go to like something that's used, uh, is bought a lot, or like raspberries here. So it's bought a lot and I have this lift. Then on the right, you can actually see like the items that are uh, both together with it. So this allows them like to easily, uh, easily explore like the different uh, kind of items and for each kind of item on different levels to actually see things that they didn't expect. All right. So that was kind of the short demo. Uh, this is just like uh, just a small example of the things that we do in a typical workshop. So then we have just some specific questions and we like uh, explore those questions and like give the end results together with the people in the company at the end of those three days. Um, you can also like meet us. Uh, I think Nicholas or Louis will be talking at uh, Google Cloud Platform Next event in Amsterdam. Uh, we're also talking to do a coached MOOC uh, session on TensorFlow. Um, but the data is not yet set here for. And then uh, we also have an ultimate data science event that's also without a date. 
So, yeah, that's we'll, it. We'll let you go for, for the moment we have dates. Um, but just maybe to summarize, um, we get a lot of things done in kind of like a short amount of time, um, which I think uh, the guys at Google really like. Um, and it's very exciting for us as well because we get to uh, solve a lot of difficult problems in many different industries. <laughs> so we get to, uh, our job is, is massively variated. So every single week, for example, on one week you can, you can do something in media, the other week you can do something in beta, and you can do something else. So that makes it very exciting and also uh, you learn a lot by the means. So uh, to edit, that's it. Um, so you can see maybe, uh, or, or you can talk to Marcus, if you want to know more about this. But uh, we're looking very heavily to uh, recruit. So if you're graduating or if you're uh, going to join us, definitely reach out. Thank you.